you guys, it's Teresa and welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be another tea talk. And yes, I do have tea this time because I actually remembered to buy it. And somehow, magically, my lipstick has not transferred to the cup. Anyway, today's tea talk is going to be on a book that um, I have talked about a ton on my Instagram. If you guys have ever seen or followed me on Instagram, it, I talk about it and stuff. And that is Everlasting Nora by Marie Miranda Cruz. And this is an actual middle grade novel. So bear with me with my review. I don't review middle grade novels very often, if at all. So if it's a little rough, or maybe I change my mind through some things, give me some leeway. First tea talk for a middle grade novel. But before I get into it, I do want to have a little trigger warning on this book. There is, um, for those of you who don't know, there is some gambling addiction that happens in this book. There's a familial death, and I believe um, assault of a child. It's more like physical, nothing sexual for a middle grade novel, but it's mainly physical assault of a child. So if that is something you are not ready to read just quite yet, or something you might find particular, a particularly hard topic for you to read about or tackle, be wary when you pick up this book. So what this book is about is this is, like I said, a middle grade novel um, that features a Filipina girl in the Philippines. Duh. She's about, I think, 12-ish? It's about the middle grade age, but after her father's death in a fire, she and her mother are forced to live in the Manila's North Cemetery, which is one of the more lar one of the largest shanty towns, I believe, in the Philippines at the current moment. And then once her mom disappears, Nora has to kind of go undergo this awkward journey, but not journey, of trying to find her her mom while also enlisting the help of her best friend Jojo and his very sweet but very terrifying grandmother. Now for my first thoughts, I was really excited to, when I heard about this book. I didn't know, like I'm pretty sure I caught it like right after it had got, been released because I don't remember the exact release date for it. And if I do remember or find out, I'll just have it, I'll just have me as I'm editing plop the date on in the screen somewhere. But I heard about this on Goodreads, I found out about it and I was very upset to not have heard about this from anywhere. Um, this is like one of the few books I have seen in America that have a Filipina writer talking about Filipinos in the Philippines. How many times can I say those words in this video? Let's not have the timer going off. But I was really upset to not have heard a lot about this considering it is something that isn't ver is very rare in the middle grade and even, even rarer in YA, which you know, kind of doesn't happen anymore. So I was excited to read about Rip, excited to read more about where I came from because I was raised in the Philippines for like six years of my sad little existence. But yeah, so when I saw that this book was, this was the only copy on the shelf at the current moment when I went to go pick it up at Barnes & Noble, and I'm pretty sure the only reason why there is a small little tear in the cover is because I snatched it off the shelf so quickly, but it's fine. One of the things that I did end up liking was that I really love the cultural aspect of this. We got to see a lot of like food from the Philippines, but if, if you guys don't know, Filipinos are all about our food. So we got to see that aspect. We also got to see a lot of like the culture around the Philippines as well, especially this kind of culture that isn't as shown in media as it should be. Aside from like the Philippines pretty beaches, we don't see a lot of like the poverty going on in here. So we got to see a different kind of, a different side of the culture that most that isn't well advertised outside of the Philippines. As well as we got to see some of the language and the best part about it is that it was written, some parts were written in Tagalog without italics. So it was really nice not to sit there and like, I can't even pinpoint where um, some of the characters will start speaking in Tagalog and in English because it's not in italics, which is really nice because I haven't seen books do that like at all. There's always been whether it is YA, adult, or middle grade, if it's in a different language, it's always in italics, which kind of separates it from the rest, which isn't bad, but it isn't good either. I like the fact that Marie Miranda Cruz decided to go ahead and include the fact that, well, not include the italics in there. I also really love Jojo and his grandmother. Jojo is a very spunky character. He's very driven, kind of stupid, but he's like 12 or 13, so that makes sense, sort of. And then... Gr um, Jojo's grandmother is like every stereotypical Filipina grandmother out there. She is very, she loves to feed people to an extent, likes to take care of people, and will smack you upside the head if you do something that kind of annoys her. So it was really nice to see those aspects of like the culture that I grew up in, and I'm just going to be babbling for a while, so it's fine. But I 
definitely enjoyed the aspects of that. I loved how resilient Nora was. She, there were a lot of instances in the book where she kept getting kicked down, where she had to be more of an adult than she should be. She's like 12, 11, 12-ish. And in some cases, she had to be more of an adult than her actual mother. So she, it was very nice to see how resilient she was and how un, how willing she was to get back up after so many hits to like her ego, her way of living, and all that stuff. Like you, you think that most eleven-year-olds, well, most eleven-year-olds whose families have been displaced several times would kind of be a little downtrodden. But Nora always seemed to manage to find a way to make more money, she was saving up so she could go home, so she could go back to school, and it was just kind of a side of like, not just the Philippines, but a lot of like kids who you don't, like you expect kids to have a childhood, but some kids don't have that option. So it was nice to have that kind of be the, the limelight, whereas if she had, she could have gotten any other angle with this, where it was a well-off kid in the Philippines, but she didn't. And it's also in the acknowledgements where she mentions how she low-key based this off a story of a young girl who um, some of the characters in here are based off of real people um i believe Kuya efren is based off of someone and nora is based off of the girl who instead of getting the opportunity to go back to school later in the novel as this book does she the guy who was visiting her had come back a year later to find out that she had died and maria miranda cruz decided to go ahead and write the life of the girl or a fic a fictitious life that this girl should have had had she been given the opportunity to live. I guess is the best way I can put it. Now as for things I didn't like, I kind of struggled, not gonna lie. I struggled to figure out what I didn't like about this book because I am very biased. You guys know me. There isn't a lot of um, Filipino rep up out there. I think for YA the only book that I know of that has a Filipino is currently Not Your Sidekick by C.B. Lee. Eu and Renegades. No. The only book that I've seen so far that has a Filipina site, like Filipina, is Renegades with Marissa Meyer, and she's, I believe they're half Filipino, so it's not even 100%, which is also fine, but you know, it's just like, there's just not a lot of us out there in YA or middle grade. So I was very biased when I finished this book, and it took a lot of reading other people's reviews, and not having a stick up my butt being like, well, you know what, maybe you should just recognize the fact there isn't diversity for us out there and just shove it. So once I did calm down from my initial excitement, I ended up realizing there were a couple things that I did find kind of difficult to grasp and wish that she had taken a different route. One of them being was that I, at the end of the book I struggled to see how much Nora had actually changed. She seems to have retained a lot of like, she's a very positive, like positive, a lot of she's not a hundred percent positive she has her flaws but she's a very the kind of character she became was very positive toward her outlook but that was always i felt like her outlook from the beginning that hadn't wavered throughout the novel and i wish we had seen a little bit more of a change throughout there i'm also kind of struggling to figure out if she ever came to terms with her mother's gambling addiction we see that be a huge problem even before they had gone and lived in the mausoleum where her father is now buried. It had, like I said, it had been a problem, but I don't think Nora ever came to terms to the fact that her mother had this addiction. Her, She mentions how it's been a problem and she wishes her mother would stop, but it's never been confronted or the exact words have been used. And even then her mother at the end was like, I'm going to stop this, Nora, I'm going to be better, which is great, but we all know that addiction is kind of an up, up and down kind of situation. So we haven't really seen that up and down throughout the novel or throughout the flashbacks or even toward the end even though because we've only seen her mother kind of struggle through it we haven't seen her hit rock bottom we haven't seen her or e e despite the fact that it has been insinuated that she is in fact rock bottom with this not it with her addiction we haven't seen her try to really come out of it it's just been very much like oh i'm gonna win we're gonna be okay and i don't think nora ever came to the fact that her mother did have this addiction or have or actually needed help with this addiction and I think that if she if Nora had come to terms with her mother having this addiction it would have helped her progression her character progress a little more would have helped her seem like she gained some insight somewhere ha even though a lot of the things that she had gone through should have spurred somewhat of a change inside this girl I didn't see that very much so I think that seeing that acceptance that her mother has an addiction and she needs to be fixed, it needs to be, not fixed, because, you know, that sounds really bad, but it needs to be, what's the word? 
needs attention is the best way I can put it because I can't think of the word would have been a nice way for her to have to show the character to show the readers that Nora has changed as a character the other thing that I didn't like was that the ending was a little too melodramatic granted I mean all Filipinos are known for our metal our, our our melodrama so I mean it's not out of character for a Filipino to write an ending kind of dramatically however it is also a middle grade novel so I I was like okay this makes sense and then at the end of it I was like but does it really and it it seems like there could have been more done to it to where we could have seen the ending that she wanted without nearly as much dramatics and as much like oh no we're gonna die kind of situation that we that it was that was there if that makes sense so as for my ratings and recommendation i initially had this at a five out of five stars but after much thinking i bumped it down to a four out of five stars nothing that meant like i don't not recommend this book i think this is a great book to read it's a very different book from the ya novels not the why the middle grade novels that I think are currently out there it sets a very real tone for other realities in like the world that isn't just like what we see every now and again or based in fantastical elements or sci-fi or however you may so put it it's a very real aspect of the world that doesn't get a lot of call out there as well as a very real version of um, little kids who may not have a face that look like them or have lived a life similar to maybe how their parents had lived before the coming to America or however or even nowadays so I definitely do recommend it however I did ding it back for the fact that I didn't feel like Nora grew a ton as a character as well as I don't think that she that the ending could have ended in that similar way because it was a very idealistic ending and it felt like very wrapped in a cute little neat bow, but it is her debut novel, so I do understand why a cute little neat bow might have been the direction she was going, but I would have liked more of a realistic side, considering how realistic ending, considering how realistic the rest of the novel had gone throughout. I also do think it is a very important read as it does not necessarily like romanticize any of the aspects of um, living in a shanty town, living in a cemetery, losing family, or anything I like I said I just wish that we would have seen more of Nora's growth which would have I think elevated the sense of the novel but highly recommend highly would read again so if you guys haven't picked this up or haven't heard about it I am now telling you about it because I didn't hear about this so yeah but that is it for my tea talk for today I kind of I feel like it's a little shorter than normal but it's also like I like I said I don't review middle grade novels often nor do I make tea talks about them so if it was a little rough I apologize but we're gonna stick with it however if you guys want more more of my thoughts on it all of my social meetings will be down below you guys are more than welcome to contact me or leave a comment if you want more in-depth thoughts as well I do upload twice a week so subscribe so you guys don't miss anything like if you like these videos so I know how often to do them in the month or how often to do them period but until my next video I will talk to you guys Later. Bye.